Hello. Thank you for joining me here today in my uh, cardboard box where there is a sense of coziness and comfort. Today I'm going to be drawing a picture which I didn't know it when I started, but by the time I reached the end of the picture, I realized that this picture represented or attempted to portray the feeling of what it feels like when you have something to say, when you have an idea, when you have feelings in you, when you have things to say, but they just don't come out that way. When you have something to say, but you can't convey it and they all get tangled up and uh, kind of the feeling I'm experiencing right now. I will leave the comfort of my box, which I ordered. Uh, well, I didn't order the box. I got a new chair and the box, the box came around the chair. Let's go draw now. Hello? Hello? Is anyone out there? Okay, I'll stop. Uh, how, how are all of you, though? Hope you're hanging in there. Um, I, for this drawing, I'm using the, the Rotring Isograph 0.35 pen and drawing on Bristol paper. I really haven't used this pen a whole lot lately, even though it's one of my favorite pens because I've been doing so many pen review videos. I've, I feel like a lot of being a YouTuber is noticing trends with your, with your videos and noticing which videos do better, do worse, and trying to do some sort of kind of witchcraft analytics. I mean, YouTube gives you a lot of analytics, but you have to analyze your own videos in some, some way on your own to try to figure out which videos are doing better and why. Because sometimes it's obvious which videos do better and why, but sometimes it's not obvious which... Uh, why some videos do better, and you can try to replicate, uh, you know, try to recreate that magic, and it doesn't doesn't work sometimes. Anyways, what I have noticed is that if I just sit down and draw, just grab a piece of paper and grab my favorite pen, which is often the Rotring Isograph that I'm using here, uh, it doesn't really work. Like it will get just a fraction of the views of a pen review, which is fine. But so that's one reason why I've been doing a lot more pen reviews lately. I guess it just has the uh, ability to bring in a lot more different viewers or it's just a little bit more interesting because, well, it's a different pen that, for first of all, I haven't seen before and other people might not have seen before. And it's just, it's got a lot more different factors, different ingredients in the soup, right? that's okay but it did feel good to go back to this just sitting down and drawing because sometimes it does get a little bit draining uh, figuring out what you know what magic sauce to add to the video this time is it going to be a pen review is it going to be this is it going to be that i mean i did add you know like a weird little intro and i, I have fun doing weird intros um, I think those are pretty important, not to have a too boring of an intro. The, the first few seconds seem to be important, uh, but that that this is really how I started falling in love with drawing, is just sitting down and starting without any pretense, without any planning, and that's what I did here with this video, and it felt good. It felt really good, and I think it turned out really well, too. The... the um, the reception, like when I posted this drawing on Instagram, was pretty good. I think, I, I don't know if it's good how much I overthink my drawings and stuff, but I guess, I, th I think there is something to be said for drawing faces, right? We're humans, we have faces where some, something in us is like biologically engineered to also latch on to seeing other faces. I mean, we see, even when I don't, draw faces. People see faces in my drawings, and we see faces everywhere else. I mean, what's that called? Paradoila? Para, para, I'm Googling it now. Para, 
Pareidolia. I don't know how to pronounce it. Can I listen to it? Pareidolia. Pareidolia. You can look it up. P A R E I D O L I A. The tendency for incorrect perception of a stimulus as an object, pattern, or meaning known to the observer, such as seeing shapes in clouds, seeing faces in inanimate objects or abstract patterns, or hearing hidden messages in music. So, I thought it was just seeing faces in things, but now I'm seeing that it can apply to all sorts of things, like uh, even patterns, hid hidden messages in music, which... I thought that was schizophrenia. Like when, no, no, because there are, are all those people that see, uh, that think they're like hidden messages, you know, like something about, you know, Hail Satan and Beatles music and stuff, especially if you play it backwards, so on and so forth. But I really do think it's interesting how we are, how, how we love seeing faces in everything. Like on the Wikipedia article here, there's a satellite photograph of a Mesa on Mars and it's called The Face on Mars. We we love pointing that out. Our, our brains yearn to see faces everywhere. And we like looking at our own faces and other faces. The, you know, there are all these um, best practices on YouTube. Uh, where I have like this YouTube manager. And there's all these like little pro tips and stuff that pop up on my YouTube dashboard. And one of the things I keep seeing is people recommend that you should put um, a face in your YouTube thumbnail because just something about our brains are drawn to f other faces. And it might be true, but I mean, some of my best videos don't have a face. I mean, by best, I don't, I don't think they're necessarily actually my best videos, which is one of the things I try not to overthink my videos too much because... Some of my mo my most well performing videos. I don't know why they're so well performing, right? That's just that silly YouTube algorithm. But they don't have a face in the thumbnail. It's just like a bit. It's one of the, some of the thumbnails I try the hardest on. Don't do very well, is it? So maybe it doesn't have anything to do with the thumbnail. Maybe it's the title. So I, I, I'll try not to. If I want, if I have wanted to, I could verbally uh, out loud think about it for you. But I, I'll try not to. Um, but faces are a weird thing. So maybe I'll draw some more faces is what I, what I took just like two or three minutes here to try to get around to saying is that I do think it's cool how I turned this doodle into a face in a very roundabout way. I didn't mean to draw a face, but then I realized I have this big block of lines and it could be the inside of a mouth. So I added a couple teeth. I drew lips around it. A very squished kind of nose and eyes, ears, you know. Uh, and then there is also something I was, I was very happy about, the, the contrast between the face, the head, uh, the mouth and the teeth, and then the, the body I added around it. I drew a little suit, but this part was very lacking in detail, very minimalistic, right? Just a few very sparse lines. And I think I want to try doing that more in the future also. The... Usually when I draw a picture, it's a, a, a very constant uh, level of detail throughout the whole thing. And I think maybe I can play around with really switching it up. Uh, sections of high detail and then sections of low detail. That's another way to do contrast. Because right now I've been doing, you know, learning, trying to teach myself to do contrast with darkness and lightness, right? Depth, uh and bringing things forward in the drawing, but there's another way to do contrast with detail and less detail. I'm sure there's like tons of other ways to do contrast also. So anyways, just thinking out loud here, uh, it's a whole weird thing. Art, YouTube, how they play together. Uh, I don't know what's going on, but I'm having fun with it. <sighs> Thanks for watching everyone. Hope you're doing all right. Stuff's crazy out there. Love all of you. Take it easy, all right? All right. Goodbye.